This is a little bit of a different video today. This is Navy SEAL Rob's five banks in one month. What? Apparently this happened in 2017, perhaps. Um, so let's check it out. I have no idea what we're in for, but I thought it was interesting. Let's check it out together. Friday, December 27th, <gasps> my <birthday>. 2017. <laughs> a former Navy oh SEAL gosh. who had just settled down in the quiet suburbs of Austin, Texas, quickly found himself moonlighting as a bank robber over a period of one month, single-handedly taking down five banks in broad daylight, even hitting the same banks twice. Absolutely perplexing authorities. Police are investigating he didn't get caught. In the last eight hours, including... And after shaking up the FBI's violent crimes task force and local authorities alike, one detective would inevitably come face to face with the operator after one final score. What? What? Did he get caught? Did he die? What happened? I'm so intrigued. In 1982, a young enlisted sailor by the name of Thomas Mixon attended the Navy's six month long Shush. Navy SEAL selection course, basic underwater demolition SEAL training, most commonly referred to by its acronym BUDS, and arguably one of the most difficult special operations selection courses the world has ever seen, with an attrition rate of nearly 75%. You don't start making up your own rules around here, Casey. That's it. Minor adjustments. You don't belong here, sir. And after completing BUDS and SEAL qualification training, Mixon earned his coveted trident and was assigned to SEAL Team 5, a West Coast team based out of Coronado, California, where he deployed three times with Delta Platoon. His duties included weapons and ordnance maintenance, long short range land navigation, instruction in hostage rescue training, as well as close quarter combat, and lots of bar fights in uh, PB. And after serving four years with SEAL Team 5, Mixon joined a highly classified small operational team in 1990 known as Red Cell. A group of American commandos carried out dozens of terrorist attacks worldwide. They penetrated military bases, kidnapped government personnel, and raided weapon storage sites. The so original Red Cell was a 14-man team composed of 13 bank. members of SEAL Team 6 and one Force Recon Marine. The unit was organized to attempt to infiltrate and otherwise test the security of U.S. military bases and other installations. They would frequently use false IDs, dismantle fences, barricade buildings, and even kidnap high-ranking personnel. Additionally, what? Red Cell planted bombs near Air Force One, snuck into submarine bases, and took them over. And amongst the team, was Thomas Mixon. And realizing the potential and value of his skill set outside of the teams, Mixon left Red Cell and the Navy altogether in 1990 to turn those skills into some real money through what? private executive security and his clients, the Royal Saudi family. Although not much is known about his specific role, it doesn't take a historian to figure it out. As in that same year, Mixon was providing security for the Saudis, an armed campaign waged by a United States-led coalition of 35 countries against Iraq was launched in response to the Iraqi invasion and annexation of Kuwait, better known as Desert Storm. And it only took Mixon one year to quit as he moved to Austin, Texas, looking for change. The robbery, so in 2017, Mixon settled down and attended the University of Austin while launching his own business as a personal trainer called Fit Frog Personal oh, Training right and marketed the program as a Navy SEAL style conditioning course. But somewhere in between semesters and personal training, Mixon would take on more security and consulting gigs overseas yeah, off and on from 2004 through 2007, quite possibly earning 20 to $30,000 a month while deployed. And when he wasn't deployed, he was stateside chipping away at his bachelor's in kinesiology. And shortly after obtaining his degree, Mixon quickly made a name for himself as a personal trainer in the Austin area, where he was even featured in a 2007 issue of Austin Fit magazine, absolutely catapulting his business. And he'd make wow. a name for himself once again, 10 years later, but this time as a professional bank robber. Why? His motives behind the decision remain unclear, but one look at his resume would tell you he's more than likely the kind of guy that would get away with it. And whether it was the seductive force of mathematical certainty through the application of his tactics or personal or financial problems, on December 22nd of 2017, Thomas Mixon, former SEAL, 
former red cell operator who blended into society as a nobody personal trainer, overtook his first bank. And at approximately 1 p.m., an armed mixin entered the branch of an IBC bank on Ranch Market. Wearing a black hat and sunglasses, he stormed the teller station, pulled out a red and gray bag, and tossed it to the teller, ordering the woman to fill it up with the money. Mixon then told the bank employees to count backwards from 30 before calling police and left the bank with a take of $3,000. And not even 20 minutes later, APD officers and APD's robbery response unit arrived at the scene. The teller reported that she witnessed the suspect get into a dark gray pickup. She described the suspect as a white male, approximately mid-50s and about 5'11", with acne scars on his cheeks and carrying a red and black HEB bag with a cowboy boots graphic. APD robbery detectives and FBI special agents arrived on scene shortly after and conducted their investigation. Among the money given to the suspect were several serialized bills known as bait money. The serial numbers were previously documented by the bank and bait a list money. of the serial numbers were provided to police by bank employees who were in absolute disbelief over the whole ordeal. The odds of being a victim of bank robbery are extremely low and the odds of being a victim of bank robbery twice by the same guy i mean come on Bruh. well it happened again as mixon hit the same branch what? only two weeks later on january 5th of 2018 That's he entered the bank at approximately 12:05 p.m pointed his weapon at the tellers and ordered nerve. them to put the money in the bag once again the same female teller scared for her life same placed eight thousand and seventy five dollars cash into Mixon's leather bag. And talk about the only easy day was yesterday, official motto of bank tellers, apparently. He then told bank employees to count backwards from 60 before getting up and calling I'm police 60. and left the bank. And after police arrived, Detective Glasgow of the Austin Police Department reviewed the bank surveillance the and noticed that the suspect was consistent with the same person who robbed the bank on December 27th. Unbelievable. Why the offender would rob the same place twice left Detective Glasgow with many unanswered questions. But maybe it was the fact. <laughs> that they'd quite literally never see it coming. And these tactics proved to be effective, as Detective oh, Glasgow would find himself with even more unanswered questions after getting a call for yet another bank robbery, as Thomas Mixon was just getting started. His third robbery occurred on February 1st at approximately 1.15 p.m. APD responded to the Prosperity Bank located at 3401 Northland Drive. One of the tellers reported that the suspect entered the bank, pulled his sweatshirt over his head, and pulled out a gun, demanding the money. The tellers then handed over $11,730 in cash. Police say a man like wearing a hoodie and cap walked into the bank, showed a weapon around 1.15, and got but away with why? cash. The man last seen running south on Balcones Drive. He, if any information he already had a way to make money. Nixon would rob the same bank only six days later. He entered the bank at approximately 9 a.m., gun in hand, wearing the same clothes and no pointing sense. the same weapon at the same teller and making her fill up the same bag he did it again. with a take of $2,335. Police are investigating two bank robberies in the last eight hours, including one that was also robbed less than a week ago. Just after nine this morning, police say a man walked into the Prosperity Bank. Authorities say he showed a handgun, got cash, and ran south on balconies. That's it's crazy. the same description as this man. Police say he robbed that same bank last week and ran in the same direction. By this time, authorities were perplexed as to whether the suspect was robbing the same banks twice out of stupidity or out of a calculated playbook. And they'd soon have their answers after Mixon's final score. On February 26th, at approximately 9.20 okay, so a.m., Mixon cool. entered the Plains Capital Bank in Austin, pulled his hood over his head, drew his firearm from his waistband, and tossed his black leather briefcase onto the teller counter. What's he ordered the tellers to give him all the money they had, $43,600. In ninety-eight dollars, he finally cool. had a lucrative <laughs> score: forty-three G's right. for five minutes' work. But inside the leather bag were two radioactive tracking devices, otherwise known as rats. Detective Glasgow arrived on scene and immediately knew it was the same suspect. And he learned from bank employees that there were two tracking devices with the money that was given to Mixon. Detective Glasgow related this information to dispatch, at which point APD Communications <gasps> advised that there was an active track. 
Air One was dispatched and responded so and began tracking the signal. They tracked the signal so to a smart. gray Ford F-150 pickup within the driveway of a residential Austin suburb. APD patrol officers responded to the residence and spotted what appeared to be the homeowner coincidentally exiting his residence and walking toward the pickup. They stopped the man and made contact with him. He identified himself as Thomas Mixon, at which point Detective Glasgow arrived on scene and informed Mixon that his Ford pickup might have been involved in a bank robbery. He asked Mixon for consent to search his vehicle, at which point Mixon became extremely nervous and had trouble speaking. Officers on scene and Detective Glasgow alike, knowing full well they had their guy, anxiously awaited Mixon's answer to their question. And instead of consenting to the search, Mixon requested a lawyer. Whoa, shit. Oh, shit. Mixon was placed under arrest and booked into jail for the Plains Capital bank robbery. $34,000 in loose cash with straps bearing the unique stamp of Plains Capital Bank were recovered from within Mixon's vehicle. Detective Glasgow obtained and executed a search warrant on Mixon's residence and recovered a variety of items, including a red and gray HEB grocery bag with a cowboy boots graphic, the type of bag used during his first robbery. He then obtained arrest warrants charging Mixon for all five bank robberies and placing Why him on $100,000 bonds for each charge. Austin police have arrested a man they say robbed three banks a total of five times. On January 15th, 2019, Mixon was indicted on five federal counts of bank robbery and pleaded guilty to all five counts on April 17th of that year. On September 6th, Mixon was sentenced to serve 97 months in the Federal Bureau of Prisons. Once released, Mixon will serve an additional five years of supervised release and pay $25,943 in restitutions. After all of that success, the accomplishment of earning his trident, the lucrative security work over the years, and a successful personal training business, why a guy who seemingly had it all would make an abrupt turn to bank robbery is a mystery in itself. A mystery which only Thomas Mixon has the answers to. What the heck? Hey guys, guys, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that subscribe button. There's a that lot more so of these historical bizarre. crime breakdowns in the works, and you don't want to miss them. So be sure to subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching. Goodbye. Okay, so I just read a few comments here, and maybe this is an answer that totally makes sense, but um, people are talking about maybe he has like a kind of PTSD from not having the adrenaline rush. So he kind of did anything to get that adrenaline rush back, perhaps, which would make sense for sure. Because I don't know if he really did it for the money, because especially those first few hauls, like he didn't get that much money. And if he had the opportunity to go overseas and work as security to get twenty or thirty thousand dollars a month, I don't really feel like he did it for the money. So that could be a that could be an answer to why he decided to do it. it wasn't because of the money at all. It was because he just wanted that adrenaline rush back into his life. But kind of weird that he went to the same bank twice. I feel like it might have worked the first time, but after that, of course, the, the police are going to start catching on. And the tracker was just so genius. They knew that it was going to come back to that same bank. They just knew. Well, they were hoping he would anyways if he just followed what he usually did. And um, putting the tracker in just so freaking genius. So very interesting story. My goodness. I wonder if you guys have heard of the story before, but... Um, yeah, let me know what you guys think down below. If you guys want to check out the original video and the original channel, they are called po Popo Medic. Um, so go check them out. I'm going to leave the original video and their channel down below. So go check them out. Guys, thank you so, so much for watching. And I'll see you all in my next video. Bye, guys. Mwah.